Hello astronomers. Myself Ranjit Kumar. I am an astronomer and an astronomy educator with Space India. In this video, we are going to unbox Mead Infinity 70A Z refractor telescope. So let's unbox this telescope. So we have these three boxes and a manual and a CD. So I'm going to keep both the manual and the CD aside. So let's concentrate on these three boxes. So first I'm going to open the bigger box. So in this box we have an accessory tray and we have the tripod. So I'm going to take the tripod out from the cover. When you unbox the tripod box, make sure it has all the three sides, the screws are inserted. So let's open the second biggest box. So we have optical tube in this box. So let's open the cover. And when you remove the optical tube, make sure you are removing with proper care. So here comes the last small box. So let's see what we have in the smaller box. So we have a finder scope. So let me take the cover. We have the optical diagonal. So two different types of screwdrivers. And we have three boxes inside it. So in these three boxes we have one 26 mm eyepiece and the other one 4 mm eyepiece and we also have a 2x bar loop. So these are the parts we have from the 70A Z Mead refractor telescope. So let's understand how to assemble the telescope. In the assembling part of the video, first I have taken the tripod. So first let's understand how to uh, make a tripod ready. This tripod seems very small but we can extend the tripod. So here at the bottom you can see there are three knobs. So if you loosen the knob, we can extend the tripod. So once you have extended, then tight the knob. So similarly do the same for the other two sides. So when you extend your tripod, make sure all the three legs of the tripod are in same height. So, so we can easily fold our tripod and we can easily expand our tripod. So to control this, we, here we have the axillary tray. We have to fix the axillary tray on the support. So you can see there are three screws on the axillary tray. Just to remove those three screws. So now I have removed and you can find there are three holes on the support there are three holes so what you have to do you have to make sure the three holes from the axillary tray coincide with the three holes on the support so like this and this time you have to put the screw from the bottom part don't tight one side of the screw completely it will be difficult for you to fix the other two screws so slightly make it loose so that you can fix it for the other two sides easily. Once all the three sides the screws are inserted you can tighten the screws. So now our telescope cannot be compressed and cannot be extended. We can also keep our eyepieces on the axillary tray. So I have two eyepieces I am going to keep on the axillary tray. So now that is it from the tripod pot. So let's take the optical tube and let's understand how to assemble the optical tube on the tripod. So now we are ready with the optical tube. So in the optical tube you can find there are two knobs on the sides and we have one altitude adjustment rod. So I will tell you what is the use of this rod. So first what I am going to do, I am going to remove the two knobs. So next you can find on the tripod also you can see there is a knob over here, silver color knob. So just to loosen the knob. 
so next step you have to insert the rod on the hole so you can find there is a hole so you have to insert a, this rod on this hole and then you have to make sure these two things will be placed on the support like this so once you have kept this so first tighten this then take the two screws and put on the sides once we attach the optical tube with the tripod next step we have to attach the finder scope on the optical tube so here i have taken the finder scope so here i have taken the finder scope so from the finder scope you can see the base of the finder scope and on the telescope optical tube you can find there are two screws so just to loosen the screws take out the screws and you can see there are two holes on the base of the finder scope just insert the extension from the optical tube on the holes like this and put the screws back and make sure you are pointing the finder scope in such a way the glass part has to point the front side so we have fixed the finder scope with the optical tube next thing we have to insert the star diagonal so i am going to take the star diagonal so this part is called a star diagonal you can find there are two caps just take out the caps and there is a cap over here also remove this cap so you can find there is a silver color part from the star diagonal insert the silver color part so if it is not going inside means loosen the screws once inserted tighten the screws so that it will not come out of the optical tube so this should not come out from the optical tube so now almost our telescope setup is ready so we have to fix the eyepiece next so we have two different kinds of eyepieces one 26 mm and the other one 4 mm the basic difference between the two eyepieces will be the magnification so with 4 mm eyepiece we can magnify up to 78 times with 26 mm eyepiece we can magnify up to 27 times so this is the basic difference between the two eyepieces and we have one more thing called barlow so whatever the magnification we get from these two eyepieces if we use barlow the magnification will be doubled so since it is a 2x barlow if you use a 3x barlow the magnification will be three times the magnification as we get from the eyepiece so this is the use of these three lenses so, so now i'm going to insert the eyepiece but here i am choosing the 26 mm eyepiece as 26 mm covers more area we can point the object easily and it is best for beginners to begin with so i'm taking the 26 mm eyepiece i'm removing the cap from the two sides and again the silver color part from the eyepiece has to be put inside like this so once it is done you can see there is a screw over here just tighten the screw so that our eyepiece will not come out so this is how we put the eyepiece and for barlow so i'm going to remove this eyepiece and then i'm going to take the barlow so you can see there is a cap on the barlow just remove the cap and then you can see the silver color part again the silver color part has to be put inside like this if it is not going inside loosen the screws so once it is inserted tighten the screws you can insert this part of the barlow inside the star diagonal so once it is inserted you can tighten it so that is it from the assembling part of the telescope let's understand how to align this telescope towards any particular object so for aligning i'm going to take the barlow out from the telescope i'm going to keep only the 26 mm eyepiece so to align this particular telescope towards any object first we have to understand the use of two things first the use of this knob and second the use of this knob these two knobs so if you loosen this knob then you can do the altitudinal movement the top and bottom movement see so that's why it is called as altitude lock rod so if you lock this rod you will not be able to move, move your telescope in the altitude direction similarly this lock is called as azimuth lock if you lock if you loosen this you can make the telescope to move left and right movement 
so if you locked it you will not be able to move your telescope towards left and right direction that's why it is called as 70 az the az stands for azimuthal and altitudinal moment so now i hope you understood the role of these two knobs to point this telescope towards any particular object we have to first align the finder scope with the optical tube because uh, it will be easy for us to first find the object in the finder scope as it covers more area than the eyepiece so for that what we have to do we have to first align our telescope towards any terrestrial object terrestrial object in the sense you can align a nearby tree building a tower anything you can align so once you align keep your eye on the eyepiece and make sure that the object comes to the center of the eyepiece so here we have the eyepiece so once it comes to the center of the eyepiece now go to the finder scope and then you can find there are three knobs over here so one at the bottom one at the top and one at the side so these two knobs plays a important role in aligning the finder scope with the optical tube so the knob on the front plays a major role because when you turn the knob on so it's a kind of switch when you turn the knob on you can find there will be a light red color light coming from the from this part of the eye, finder scope now i can see a red colored light from this side so that's the role of this knob if you want to point any object first make sure that light is turned on once uh, you are not pointing any object you can turn the light off now i'm going to off the light so this knob is used to turn the light on and off for the finder scope so the next the role of these two knobs so this knob makes a finder scope to move in left to right movement and similarly this knob makes a finder scope to move top to bottom movement so once you make the object at the center of the eyepiece you have to make sure that object will come to the center of the finder scope also so while doing this turn the red light on go and keep your eyes on this place on the edge and then align these two parts use these two knobs and make the same object in the center of the finder scope as well so once that object comes to the center of the finder scope now everything is done your, your telescope is ready to point the night sky objects for night sky objects it will be difficult for us to point as most of the places in the sky is empty only certain regions we can see some stars so in that case it is very important to to align the finder scope with the optical tube sometimes when you look the object from the eyepiece the object may be blurred so that is because the image is unfocused so to get the focused image you can see there are two knobs so these two knobs are called as focuser so you can adjust these two knobs see it is now expanding so the focal point will also be changing so depending upon your eyesight you can fix the focus and then you can lock the focus so this is how you need to focus the object and when doing all these things make sure you have removed the cap from the optical tube if you have not removed the cap you cannot be able to see anything so remove the cap and uh, do all the observations and uh, that is it from my side in this assembling part of the telescope and i hope you learned how to unbox how to assemble how to point this telescope towards any particular object so that is it from my side and wish you all clear skies until next time bye from my side bye bye everyone